welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and an update on some of my most recent painting projects. Um, as I've mentioned on the Plastic Crack podcast a few times, um, if you watch that on the Monday nights, if you don't, why not? Um, <laughs> I've mentioned several times that I've, my painting has slowed a little bit because I had other things to do, like uh, went away on holiday and um, work's been crazy and above everything else getting this gaming room set up um, has taken up most of my spare time so uh, that and family and also Christmas approaching obviously is a minor consideration so uh, but I still got through a decent amount in the last uh, couple of weeks probably so I thought I'd show off some of that progress um, is probably if you do follow the plastic crack you've probably seen pictures of these image of these figures largely on there because uh, I've shown them off there but um, I so these 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 the Spanish squad from the silver bayonet rules the uh, McCulloch latest set of sort of quasi fantasy rules that uh, have just been launched um, they're North Star miniatures um, they're so basically the concept of, uh, of silver bayonet is that there's um, almost a uniting of the different uh, protagonists in the Mo Napoleonic War to counter influx of evil beasts <laughs> and creatures of the night, uh, vampires and goblins and that sort of thing, uh, and, tr and demons. Um, and it, it just looked fun. Um, uh, North Star were doing a very good starter kit um we'll start a pack we could get the rules on all three um squads the, the initial squads um and then a special character which is going to be a one-off apparently um and i just thought they look really fun figures and i really like i mentioned it before on the channel i do like north star miniatures i think they're I don't mean to be disrespectful to them but they have a sort of a chunkiness to them that i really like and i enjoy painting them up um and I love the characters of this of these packs, and I thought actually I can use some of them in my inverted commas proper proper Napoleonic games. Um, you know this this monk, for instance, would be and probably this woman with a musket would probably fit quite nicely into some um, you know guerrillas in a Spanish arm, a Spanish uh, guerrilla force. These guys here are very much. Um, kind of uh, officer types or sergeant types that could be a squad leader in um, in um, uh, sharp practice or something like that. Uh, this officer could be um, a member of the crew for, um, or, or a sort of commanding guy for the militia in sharp practice or some such. Anyway, that's my justification and I'm sticking to it. Um, beautiful figures, really enjoyed painting them. Um, I think they've come out pretty good. I'm quite happy with them. Um, they are, let's say, chunky figures and, and paint up very nicely indeed. So this is the Spanish squad and this is the French squad. Uh, again, lovely moulds. I love the dismounted cuirassier here. It looks fantastic. Um, the old grunyard here, the old guard man. You know, this guy could be a, a character in sharp practice as a sort of sapper type figure. You know, there's all sorts of possibilities as well to use these models. Um, who knows, I might even play Silver Bayonet, there's a thing. Uh, really enjoyed painting them, as I said before, they're, they're really good characters. This, I mean, this guy could be an officer in the Napoleonic Army very easily. Um, in fact, mostly they're fairly historically accurate, if you like, um, but they have sort of like additional uh, crucifixes and a couple of them got stakes and things like that um, as fitting for dealing with the um, the undead that they're going to be facing. I'm not sure you could use this uh, witch-like creature, um, but yeah, the others pretty much could do. So that's the French squad done. I know, Dom doing French. And here are the Brits. Uh, again, really nice eight-man squad. Um, this guy here, the Highlander with his great big claymore. <laughs> this impressive figure. Really nice, although a bit of a biatch to clean up. The um, the flashing between the blade and his leg was really awkward to get to and to clear out. Um, that is what it is. This is uh, this guy's wearing a Royal Horse Artillery uniform. Um, this guy here I sort of did as a sort of a swashbuckling kind of sharpie figure. If 
you watch some of the films, Sharp sort of has a, a tendency uh, to be showing off his um, his chest with a t with a shirt that's open to the navel, uh, and this figure's pretty much got that. So I I thought yeah, Sharp like figure, he can be him. Um, rifleman here, and oh, they're getting good, great. This guy's supposed to be a doctor. Although well, somewhere I've managed to lose his bag. <laughs> Apparently he came with a, a medicine bag, but I don't know what's happened to it. Um, it's gone walkabouts. Never mind. I'm not that fussed. Um, but there you go. That's those eight done. So this guy on the right is the limited edition. Um, I think they called him a veteran vampire hunter or something like that. Um, which you got if you got a bit of fluff on him. Uh, which you got if you um, purchased this uh, pre-order starter pack, which had the rules and the three squads in it. Um, I just thought it's a bit of a laugh. Um, <laughs> really nice little figure. Uh, I left this one off the Spanish uh, unit. He got stuck under a under a book. Um, so it's just another Spanish uh, trooper. And um, again, really nice model. He's got his um, sort of coat over his shoulder. He's got his sleeves rolled up and his sabre in his hand, ready to go and do, do some doom to the uh, evil marauding creatures. So that's that's lot done. That's all the good lot. Um, the um, third wave or second wave is coming with um, a Russian, Austrian and Prussian um, squad, I believe. We'll see whether I buy into those or not. I probably will because they're just, I've really enjoyed painting them. They're a bit like the Badgers and Burrows. They're just nice to do something a bit different. And as one-off figures, you have to sort of spend a little bit more time on them. And uh, rather than doing sort of eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 of uh, a unit of troops. But um, anyway, that's them done. So as well as the um, special veteran vampire slayer, you also got this, um, I think you called him a hobgoblin. Um, figure with that starter pack um, and um, I thought I might as well buy some other uh, evil gobliners whatever they are hobgoblins I don't know what they're supposed to be I haven't even opened the rule book yet um, but I picked up these from from North Star um, to play some of the evil um, things and they're just they're a bit sort of uh, same posed you can see they're all based on the same model um, a couple of them got slight variations in them, but there's not an awful lot of variations. So I've tried to do that with um, different skin tones and washes and so forth. The leader is very much brighter than the rest of them. Um, and that's kind of intentional because I want him to sort of be the shining light of the squad, if you like. And the others sort of just the grunts that follow him behind. He's the only one that doesn't have a shield, but they do. Um, don't know whether that plays a part in the rules. Um, so I haven't even opened them yet, so we'll find out. But fun to do, fun to get out. Um, and as I say, just variety. Uh, variety is always the thing. If you, if you can keep doing different things, it doesn't help the painting mojo. There you go, that's them done. So while I haven't actually opened the Silver Bayonet rule set, um, I have watched a couple of people's videos of games and... Um, one of them, um, I can't remember who it was, apologies, uh, put up uh, the first, um, first scenario, basically, in the rule book, uh, which was uh, the heroes trying to beat off a band of, were of wolves that uh, could turn into werewolves. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, I've got a little pack of wolves somewhere. Um, so um, I painted these fellas up. So if I do play a game, I can at least play the first mission. Um, they're just... Very simple metal um, wolves. Um, don't know where they're from, um, but I've just basically uh, done them in a variety of different colours, bit of a dry brush on them and put them on the bases. So if you, this guy actually is too big for the base, but I wasn't going to pull him off and, and that sounds all wrong. I wasn't going to strip him off and restart it. Um, so it's just going to hang off the base. Sue me. I don't care. Um, there's another, what's that, two, four, six, eight, nine wolves completed. So next up, this is a unit of six French Voltigeurs. Um, again, North Star. Um, I bought these some time ago. Um, I've already painted up six of them. I bought 12. I also bought some line infantry um, to be used for um, Shakos and Bayonets for the um, Napoleonic version of Muskets and Tomahawks. And... Um, 
yeah, I, I, I kind of got a bit demotivated. I did the first six and sort of thought, oh, well, the others will be easy to do and just haven't really been bothered to get around to doing them. Um, but I had a re-go, uh, refresh and um, started again and this is the next six completed. So quite pleased actually with how they came out for Frenchies. Um, they'll go into the stash um, and say, Having the new gaming room allows me to sort of think, well, if I'm going to play some solo games, I need two sides. So um, I had been picking up the odd sort of French unit to to put up against the, the allies um, and certainly for the Shakers and Bayonets. Um, I've got plenty now with uh, individual figures and, and what have you to be able to do games um, if I wish. Um, and um, yeah, quite pleased. Again, I, I like these North Star figures. They kind of they have a sort of chunkiness to them which kind of um, I enjoy painting. So there's another six completed. But because all that made me feel slightly dirty doing all those French, well there's the silk for bayonets and then the uh, voltageurs, I thought I'd better get on to finally do some British Napoleonic artillery. These are Vitrix plastics. Um, if you remember when I did a sort of uh, showed off what I'd made up when I'd been on my holiday in uh, Cornwall earlier in the year, um, I'd um, Oh, just seeing that's all scraped in there. That's weird. I'm going to have to touch that up. Um, when I was on my holiday, I um, uh, showed off um, uh, sort of making up some various kits and I made up all the Vitrix, a Vitrix bag of uh, British artillery. But for some reason, I've kind of um, just, I don't know what's happened. I just haven't wanted to paint them. I started a couple of times. They're all undercoated, all ready to go. Um, and actually, ironically, I, I need British artillery. I haven't got much British artillery to go with my Napoleonic um, British forces. Um, I made some up like these with the Belgique Shakos and some with the um, uh, the earlier one. I forget what it's called. The the one that was used in the peninsula just to give me a variety. But um, uh, you can see this is a howitzer and there's a, a nine pounder on the end there. Um, not much to say. I mean, the Vitrix plastics are okay, I think. Um, these aren't my favourite, but I, I just don't know what it was about a block of doing it, but I did. I got a complete block of painting them. Um, so I'm really pleased to get at least two of the batteries done. I think I've got another four to go. <laughs> so um, I have to have another spurt of energy and get on with them. But nice to get two done. There you go. Although, as I say, I don't know what's happened with that one. That something's scraped a whole load of the paint off the back of the, um, of the, of the back of the carriage there. Very odd. I have to get in there with a bit of paint and clean it up. Anyway, there you go. Done. So brother Ken on the plastic crack got very excited when I showed the picture of this fella. Um, this is a... No, I, I, I think... It's a Trent miniatures. I wasn't. I'm really not entirely sure. Um, it's uh, obviously a bishop, and I've painted him up just sort of like a, a medieval bishop. Um, and I kind of had in my mind I'd use him as sort of religious figure in amongst the um, the Normans in uh, Sicily project. However, I'm not really sure whether he's most appropriate for that. Um, but I don't know, I, it was in the box uh, when I was search, searching through things and I found him, I thought I'll just paint him up. We were going to be doing a, um, a Lion Rampant game and I thought I could use him as the religious leader for the religious group I was running in that. Uh, in the end I didn't, I used a whole load of monks, um, but um, nice to get it done. It's a nice little figure actually, you never know where he might be useful, so um, he'll go on the shelf of um, useful bits. <laughs> And finally for now, um, this is a unit of eight um, kind of Berber, Saracen, Araby type archers um, that I painted up for my um, Normans in Sicily project. Uh, they're metal figures. I really don't remember where they're from. I'm sorry. Um, but um, they're lovely. Actually really nice. I wish I did because I'd... Um, Probably get some more. Um, they're they're kind of nice. They've, you can see they've got very similar poses, but they've got enough variation in them to make them, um, you know, kind of entertaining. So, you know, this guy's got very similar pose to some of the others, but he's, but he's got a cloak on. Um, this guy's in the same pose as, as uh, one of the other ones over here, but he's oh that one, but he's got a helmet on. He's got um, 
sort of head wrappings. Um, so the, the, just those little nuances and differences which make it fun to do and a um, little unit of eight is quite easy to knock out. So um, I've just done them to be sort of nondescript uh, mercenary troops uh, in my in my army. Um, in fact, I used them as skirmishers in that line Rampant game that I played down the club the other week, um, which was their first art outing. And um, even though new painting syndrome or new painted figure syndrome is a thing, they actually survived and did all right. Um, so there you go, lovely figures, really good fun to do. So there you go, that's what I've been up to in the last couple of weeks, uh, painting wise, um, reasonably productive. I, I was hoping I was gonna hit the 2000 painted figures for the year, I don't think I'm going to, um, but, um, with all the or painted infantry that was, I, I mean, if you combine all the other stuff, then I probably am cl much closer to 2,000 figures, um, which for a year is pretty good going, so I'm, I'm quite happy. It was fun to just keep a record of it. Um, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure how many... I'm not sure I can keep up that pace next year. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I've got still got plenty in the stash to do, so um, no shortage of painting projects, that is for sure. Anyway, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe, um, hope your projects are going well. If you've enjoyed this, please hit like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Subscribers are going up again, which is fantastic. Thank you to everybody who's uh, following the channel uh, and commenting as you do. It's really good, really love this, to hear what everyone's thinking and what their, you know, their advice, their recommendations, they're just liking what I'm doing. So appreciate it immensely wouldn't be the same without it um, and above all Christmas is coming if you celebrate Christmas I hope you have a fantastic Christmas if you don't I hope you have a good uh, period where you have a bit of time out um, and um, just stay safe stay well and I will see you again soon this is Dom signing out mm -hmm.